All right, guys, so here's my old radiator. I just repaired it, and it doesn't leak with JB Weld again. It lasted um, about three years the last time I did that. Um, it works, but not very well, especially in the summertime. And you can see the uh, inlet and outlet are different sizes. And then I've got a radiator that's designed for a Chevy. See, it's a big boy. It's a little bit shorter by about that much, but it's wider and it's a three row. And it's also a tad bit thicker, but the rows are a little bit thinner than uh, mine on my two row. They're, you know, it's kind of weird, but yeah, it's more cooling capacity. That's all you need to know. And it looks cool. It looks like a, you know, $300 radiator would look, but it's actually only 120 bucks. So that's good. It comes with fittings for the uh, or a fitting for the overflow to come out of. And yeah, it's the same size inlet and outlet as my truck. As you can see, this is down further. If you look at my radiator, like rewind and look at mine, that's down further, so that little angle that it's on isn't a big deal. Um, so that's fine, but yeah, I'm happy about this. It's going to barely fit in between my frame rails. Hopefully it won't even have to go down that far. Hopefully I could just put it on there to where the, the mounts just squeeze it down, and that would be probably sufficient. Um, and if not, and if I'm scared of that... I can just put some zip ties or whatever. Um, I will be getting electric fans because it's like another free 20 horsepower. And then you can see they give you this nice drain plug with an O-ring. They paint the thing too. I can tell by looking at this O-ring. Um, it's got paint on it. Uh, but it's a plastic um, deal here. And it's got like a little groove in there to let the water out. So whenever you're... Uh, you don't have to take it out all the way and go all over the place. So yeah, that's going to be great. Um, there was a lot of air bubbles going on in my other radiator because it had those holes and it was pissing everywhere. So this one's going to be great and I'll show you the install. Alright, here's a little clip of the uh, radiator being put in the way I want it. I'm using the stock mounts which just happened to almost line up perfectly. You can see they hit the corner by that weld, and they hit the corner by that weld. And uh, the radiator cap is in the same spot. You can see the little notch right there. And I think it's going to be really good right, right there where it's at. And you can see it's on an angle that's actually stock, I think, because of the angle of the motor. But that's good, too, because then I can fit my fan in there still. And... If you look at the front of the truck, you can see that the Airstream, even though it's a slightly shorter radiator, it actually only hits the radiator. Like, you know, like the Airstream goes right into the radiator and it stops. Like you can see, that's the end of the radiator and that's the bumper looking at it straight. And then looking up here, it even goes up a little further. That's looking at it straight. So, really, we're taking advantage of the width of the uh, whole deal here and then also you got to take into account that these fins are aluminum and there's like tons tons more of them than the brass there's just little thick brass ones and they're you can fit two of these fins in where the brass ones are so it's better overall cooling so and we'll do some tests when I'm finished but now I'm going to go ahead and figure out I think that I'm going to use some angle iron to put on the bottom because it's basically like this on the uh, bottom the same thing here and then the angle iron I don't know where it went I guess it fell on the ground we'll go like this and now we'll like curl it in and then these little mounts will push down on it and the uh, structural integrity of this down here looks fine because of the amount of grease and oily coolant and stuff that fell on it but I think, like my dad was saying, is to cut this in half and then do two feet, um, one on each side, and then that'll probably be 
stronger too since that's on the frame rail like not but four inches away so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get started alright so I got the first two brackets in I don't know what I'm looking at because it's so bright over here but you can see I got just a couple of tabs kind of welded on there one there one down there they're not uh, permanent uh, for fixing it to the truck but they're just to hold it there while I can work around it um, instead of having that radiator in the way so the next step is to weld on a couple more tabs and then get the uh, wall here cut out so I'm gonna go ahead and probably just weld on a little tab right here at the corner and the same thing on that side just to get it to uh, stay in place and then I'll start welding um, down there and everywhere pretty much so yeah alright so I got a bracket welded in right there and over here I can't see over there and now I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing out because it shouldn't be supporting this anymore. It should be supported on its own, which it is. So I'm going to pull all this out and then I'm going to get back to you uh, when I decide what I'm going to do with the rest of it. Here's the progress. I got a uh, little U-channel like bracket welded on there. Um, I ended up putting a big fat tack right here to help this piece stay attached to this piece because it looks like uh, they welded it on there but not very well from the factory. So now I've got to put one more bracket over there. I already put the other piece of that U-channel right there and it is super solid like you can barely move it and if you can move it it's actually the whole entire radiator support moving uh, because of this uh, hole right here but I don't care and I got this piece cut out this is my final piece and then I'm gonna start painting this just to keep it um, from doing weird stuff to that radiator with like electrolysis I don't know a lot about that but all I know is I'm gonna paint it and uh, I'm probably gonna put some just silicone or flex glue or something in there I might not but I might also just uh, leave it bare metal and then just have the radiator, expect the radiator to not move around in there. You're supposed to have it mounted on rubber, um, but whatever. So yeah, I'll get that last one welded in there and then I'll start hacking up these little bracket things that come stock with the stock radiator. Alright, so I got the thing cut out there. You like my cut? It's real nice and whoop, but yeah, it's cut out and uh, still pretty strong. I don't think I did anything to this either, this uh, big bracket here. Um, and I kept the piece pretty much intact except for a little bit of it because I was kind of going that way a little bit and there was a little bit sticking out so I had to cut a little slither off which you just saw fall and so I could weld it back in if I want to basically and now I'm gonna go ahead and see what needs to happen with the radiator hoses because tonight it's starting to get a little bit late and the cutting is starting to get loud so yeah alright so just for now I have them brackets put on there and I'm like really putting like 100 pounds on this right now just back and forth and it's like not going anywhere so that that's very surprising to me that without having that notched or really that tight even it's not moving like you can see it's not really there's like a gap back here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch all this out where it's touching tomorrow and it's gonna be great you can kind of see it's got a bow to it because it's probably is clamping down pretty hard or maybe I just did that I don't know but I found a hose for a 92 to I went back into AutoZone's like hose rack just I was there at the time and I was like why not I had my other one and 
I found this one and I looked up the part number and it happens to be that I chose one that's actually for a 4.9 for a 92 through 96 model. So when I put this sucker on here, it looks like it's the right like exact hose. You know? So looks like that's going to work out great. The uh, end here is too big because I thought that I would need like a bigger end here when I was looking at the hose rack. But if you look at it, it kind of looks weird because it's huge. Like it's kind of sticking up high and stuff. So I think that if I cut off this whole end and just moved it like down to here, it would look a lot better anyway. But you can see the difference between that hose and then this hose. This is where the radiator was before. You can see the extension that I gave it. And then here's what the radiator looks like from looking back here. It's pretty big, as you can see. So I think that um, highway towing is going to be acceptable in this now, for sure. But this rear or this bottom hose is going to be kind of a pain to get on because you can see this is kind of angled up like I said earlier. So this is going to need to be kind of heated up so that way it doesn't kink. I don't know if you can see that. But if you put it up this way you can see it kind of gets fat at the bottom. That's because it's trying to kink. So I don't want that because that's the hot side. So, but yeah, that's it for uh, tonight. I'll get back to it tomorrow. All right, so I decided not to do anything with the brackets because this one's almost touching and that one's almost touching. So with the clamping pressure, it's pretty much solid, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I went ahead and put the fan back on, tensioned my belt back up, put this hose on, and there's no leaks apparent uh, so far. So what I'm gonna do is, I was playing with my electric choke, that's why that's off. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it up on these ramps that I bought from the auto parts store. I think it was actually Harbor Freight. But I got these ramps and I'm gonna put the front tires up on that on my driveway so it's like on a 10 degree angle or something like that and then I'll get all the bubbles out of the cooling system. All right, so it kept squirting out of the uh, overflow cap thing. I don't know why. I thought it had a blown head gas because this is really tight. I don't know what's going on with my camera. But that's not true because if it had a blown head gas, it would be shooting out everywhere right now. But you can see, when I put this on here, it's 110 degrees, 115. And then down here, it's 70 degrees. And if I feel this, it should be hot up here, which it is. 105 So it's active right now. It's working I have a 180 degree thermostat in it right now I know it's kind of dangerous to see this but I'm interested to see if the bottom hose is tight bottom hose is tight too so it must just be the steam inside the cylinder head that's causing that and it gets to a certain point and then it stops I've never noticed that before but yeah it seems to be doing fine I'll come back when it's warmed up I am going to go ahead and order some electric fans for it um, to get a little bit more power out of it but you can see it's pretty much almost warmed up now I'll come back again when it's fully warmed up, or if it d doesn't stop, or if it doesn't keep going, then I won't come back, but yeah, it's working pretty good. It just squirted out again for some reason, but the temperature's at the O, and it hasn't climbed past it, so it's working great. And here's the new exhaust setup for the truck. It's extremely quiet, but it's, it's not finished well, that's why it sounds weird. So I'm going to finish welding that up, and that'll be good. But thanks for watching.